Welcome back. Uh, we're going to talk about budgeting. Uh, I try to do this at least once a year, if not twice a year, and I can't say it enough. Budgeting is the most difficult thing, I think, for any of my clients that come to me and say, what can I do to improve? And honestly, it is budgeting. I struggle with it. Everyone close to me struggles with it. Sometimes you just got to test it out and do it and say, hey, listen, let me just track my expenses. That's the starting point. But here are the reasons why I think it's important. 20% uh, of Americans do not save. Uh, I believe it's probably higher than that. Less than a third of Americans do not maintain a budget. Again, I think that's a high number. I bet you it's less. 50% uh, of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, uh, meaning what comes in goes out or more goes out. And there's over $1 trillion in credit card debt. And I can't even get my head around that of what that means you know, per person. But certainly budgeting is the way in which, not necessarily to make changes, I believe it's more about awareness. And when someone tracks something, it's not about getting this foreign thing or this scary thing completed and done right. It's about going through the exercise. That's the most important thing. Let's take a look at how to budget. Hopefully this helps out a little bit. Number one, identify your income. That's the first thing. Get your W-2, your 1099, Social Security, pensions, investment, rent. Uh, grab your last two years tax returns and double check that you didn't miss anything. So once we have income, we move to number two. Categorize your expenses. There'll be fixed expenses. There'll be variable expenses. Your fixed expenses are the ones that are there all the time, every month. You got your mortgage, your car payment, uh, utilities, and whatever it may be. And then you got your variable expenses, uh, which are your groceries, your home maintenance, some medical expenses. Number three, set up a, actually pay yourself first. Um, and what that means is that 20% savings, try to get at least 10 or 20% of what comes in, get it out of sight, out of mind, get some sort of gatekeeper that can protect you from grabbing that. Uh, number four, plan for discretionary expenses. Uh, so make sure that you have an emergency fund to take care of three to six months of income uh, that's coming into the household that if you ever lost a job or got sick. Uh, you also want to make sure that, you know, eating out, gifts, hobbies, uh, paying for kids' activities, you want to have that account there so it doesn't affect what comes in and goes out. You have some sort of buffer there. Uh, number five, compare and adjust. Once you do this, make sure your income is not greater than, is not less than your expenses. Um, and fine-tune that on a regular basis. Here is maybe a simplified version. They call it the 50-30-20 budgeting rule. Okay, so 50% of your budget should be for needs, grocery, housing, utilities, health insurance, car payments. 30% uh, should actually be your wants, extra shopping, uh, hobbies, dining out, and 20% as we say savings. So they call that the 50-30-20. This is never going to be perfect. This is just an idea of maybe a starting point of how you can categorize you know, some of the things that you do. Let's take a look at some budgeting apps. So there's certainly some good resources here. I love mint.com. It's free. Uh, it's account aggregation, bill payment tracker, budgeting, gives you a credit score. Uh, personal capital, this is for advanced users. It'll show cash flow, give you nice charts, uh, net worth, uh, deep dive into investments. And then YNAB, which means you need a budget. Uh, that's a good one. It gives your dollar a job to do it. So if you say $10 coming in, it's going to go to $10 of this. You can set goals, monthly expenses, fund them with income. It's extremely educational. Number four uh, is Albert. Uh, Albert is budgeting and investments. Uh, there's a great add-on tool here where they'll negotiate your bills and try to automatically uh, get them down. Uh, you can also text an expert. It's $4 a month for that one. And then good budget uh, is the old envelope method. Uh, you just assign different envelopes and you put your income into them and it helps you track that stuff easier. So what I said, get some control, some stability there. Uh, I challenge you to just track your expenses as a starting point. When we return, we'll take a viewer question. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We have a viewer question. Uh, Beverly from Cranston asks, since everything these days seems to be online, how do I make sure that if something happens to me that my family can get into my accounts? That is a loaded question. That is a new question that a lot of people ask. And number one, list out all your digital assets. So anything that you hold in bank accounts or investment accounts, list the website, your ID, your password. Number two, back up any data that you think is important. Let someone know where that data is, whether it's in the cloud or whether it's on a hard drive. 
Number three is super important. You need to have legal consent for someone that if you were incapacitated or passed away to actually log into those accounts. So make sure you have that document. Most importantly here, if you've got a million passwords, you can actually use something called Dashlan, D-A-S-H-L-A-N-E. It will store all your IDs and passwords. That's a great way that you only need to share one ID and password with that special person. We thank you for joining us this week. We hope you have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you again next week on Successful Living.